This is a user-orientated video to provide instructions on how to use the phosphorus budget calculator. The calculator can be used to determine the approximate phosphorus loading of a development, whether a project is phosphorus neutral, and if it is not neutral, a guide on what mitigation can be put in place in order to achieve neutrality. I will work through a simple example to demonstrate how the tool should be used and clarify the steps where user input is required. The Help tab provides useful information on the various stages, definitions of land use types, and criteria for determining soil drainage characteristics. The user can jump to the relevant section by using the links provided in the menu. A color coding is used throughout this calculator whereby cells highlighted green require an action from the user and cells highlighted orange are calculated automatically. The info tab allows the user to input information relevant to their development, such as the address and details of proposed works. Stage 1 calculates the additional phosphorus added into the system as a result of an increased population. The first step is to calculate the additional population. Here the user should input the number of dwellings proposed. This will be multiplied by the national average occupancy to calculate the increased population. For a proposed development that already has a population, only the additional population should be inputted. The second step is for the user to select if the sewage is to be treated by wastewater treatment works or by on-site package treatment plants. First, I will run through the wastewater treatment works. The user should ensure that yes is selected for wastewater treatment works and no is selected for package treatment plants, you cannot select both options. The user must then select the wastewater treatment works that the development will connect to. If this has not been determined, then the user should select the closest works to their site. If this is still uncertain, then there is the option to select unknown. This will automatically calculate the phosphorus loading to the system in kilogram per year. In the case of package treatment plants, the user should answer yes and ensure wastewater treatment works are set to no. The user should then input the phosphorus reduction efficiency of the package treatment plant that is to be installed. This should be based on published results from the manufacturer that calculated the value from laboratory test results or effluent concentrations from real-world applications. If the efficiency is unknown, then a precautionary value of 90% can be used. Step 3 presents the total phosphorus load resulting from the additional population. Stage 2 calculates the phosphorus loading from the existing site land use. Firstly, the user must determine the dominant soil type of the site and should refer back to the Help tab. The dominant soil type for a site can be retrieved from Soilscapes. By clicking on the soil underlying the site the user can identify the name and number. The user should look to see if their dominant drainage type falls under free draining or impermeable from the table shown on screen. In the case where free draining and impermeable soils are both found on site, then the soil type with the largest area should be chosen. The user should then answer yes if the soil is free draining, or no if it is impermeable. Next the user should input the various current land uses on site in hectares. Multiple land uses can be selected, and the total area automatically calculated. This will automatically calculate the total phosphorus loading from the current land uses. Stage 3 calculates the phosphorus loading from the proposed land use. The user should input the proposed land uses of the site, ensuring the total area matches what was inputted in Stage 2. If large-scale designed wetlands are to be used, the user should input the predicted phosphorus banking value in Step 3. If a value is unknown, a general guide value of 12 kg per hectare per year should be used. Step 4 calculates the total phosphorus load from the proposed land use. Step 5 provides the gross phosphorus loading and should be used as a guide when iteratively adding on-site mitigation, which will be discussed later. Stage 4 provides an overview of the previous three stages and calculates the total phosphorus load by adding the phosphorus from the additional population to the net change in land use types and applying a 20% buffer. The stage considers the loading under current permit limits and AMP7 future permit limits. 
Step 5 tells the user if the project is phosphorus neutral. If the project will generate additional phosphorus then mitigation is required, the user should progress to stage 5. Stage 4 also includes a zero-value calculator that will automatically calculate what percentage of the development is phosphorus neutral and how many dwellings this equates to. However, a zero-value will only occur where the net change in land use is negative, and as such, not all projects will have one. Stage 5 provides guidance on the mitigation required, either off-site or on-site, and how the excess phosphorus can be offset through changing land uses. Step 1 outlines the excess phosphorus that needs to be offset for the project to be phosphorus neutral. Step 2 allows the users to select either on-site mitigation or off-site mitigation. Again, the user should select yes or no as appropriate and select either on-site or off-site mitigation, not both. Taking the example of on-site mitigation, the user should select the land use of the mitigation site, which in this case will be a part of their site. If the exact location on site where mitigation will be situated is unknown, then an average value can be used. For off site mitigation, the process is very similar. The user should select yes and identify what the land use is of the off site mitigation area. If more than one land use is selected, then the average runoff coefficients will be used. Step 3 provides an indication of the area needed to be created for each mitigation land use assuming that only one mitigation land use is used. Step 4 allows the user to input the amount of phosphorus they wish to offset for each mitigation land use type, and the area needed will be automatically calculated. Step 5 works the opposite way to Step 4, allowing the user to input the area of the mitigation land use type, and the tool calculates the phosphorus that would be mitigated. The values outputted will give a good guide to the areas needing to be mitigated for off-site mitigation. However, in the case of on-site mitigation, the actual area of mitigation needed will be slightly less than what is calculated in Stage 5 due to relative changes with the other land use. Therefore, the user should input the mitigation land use areas given in Stage 5 into Stage 3 and iteratively alter the areas until the proposed development is phosphorus neutral. Stage 6 acts the same as Stage 5, but the total phosphorus to be mitigated is for AMP7 permit limits. Where package treatment plants are used, or there is no difference between the permit limits, then there is no need to go any further than Stage 5. Stage 7 demonstrates the difference in the areas between the current permit limits and AMP7 limits. The Data Tables tab provides a breakdown of the permit limit values used and the runoff coefficients for the various land uses. More information on the methodology and the values used can be found in the accompanying report to this tool.